be able to tell you about the uh, software extension to the uh, PMBOK guide. Uh, I think we're on slide eight, Susan, which shows the cover of the software extension. As Susan mentioned, it has been published and is available. Uh, and later, I will tell you how to uh, obtain a copy should you be interested. So going to the next slide, what I plan to do is say a few words about how we developed the software extension. Uh, we call it SWX. Uh, the intended audience, uh, why we thought it would be useful to have this software extension. I'll give you a brief overview, a brief overview of the PMBOK guide. Uh, some of you may be quite familiar with it, but in case you're not. And the reason I want to tell you about that is to tell you how this software extension uh, is compatible with the PMBOK guide. And these are two separate documents that are uh, intended to be used uh, collectively together. Uh, so you won't find everything you need to know about uh, project management in the software extension. And the reason we have a software extension is because you won't find software specifics in the PMBOK guide. We'll uh, end up with the current status of where we are with this and uh, then uh, have time to uh, respond to your questions. So on the next slide, uh, I mention that this was a collaborative effort of PMI and the IEEE Computer Society. Uh, as Susan mentioned, uh, there were five members of the team from each organization, and I was the leader of the project. And I am the designated Computer Society delegate to PMI, and at the end I'll tell you about some things we are doing in addition to development of this extension. The other thing I would note that this was the first collaborative effort for uh, both organizations, that is, working jointly with another organization to develop a, a product. Uh, the next slide uh, lists the members of the committee. Uh, you, may, you may recognize some of those names. I would say that all of our team members had uh, extensive industrial experience in the area of project management. Uh, and uh, we did have, as you would guess, diverse skills, and that was a great uh, asset to us in, in developing the extension. Uh, on slide 12, I mentioned that uh, we had 27 invited reviewers, subject matter, matter experts, we got about 700 comments uh, we received and, and modified accordingly. And then we put it out for public review. We got about 200 reviewers there. And we received about, I think, 1,917 comments that uh, we took into account in the final revisions. Intended audiences, uh, well, as you would guess, traditional project managers and software project managers and I know I list uh, software team leaders and developers and infrastructure professionals, IT people, human resources, and basically any others. And on the next slide, I point out that, of course, for PMI members and computer society members and for the public at large. A a software extension, on slide 15, I point out that the PMBOK guide is a generic document and uh, it's intended uh, for managing all kinds of projects. But in a survey, a PMI found that more than 65% of their 400,000 or more members identify their work as IT or software related. And on the computer society side, we have about 85,000 members, and our mission is to develop products and services and that would, of course, include guidance for managing software and IT projects. Uh, the second part of why a software extension on slide 16, uh, this quote by Fred Brooks, which he wrote in 1975 about his experiences at IBM in the 1960s, has sort of been my guiding light for many years. So Fred said, 
Managing a large computer programming project is like managing many other undertaking, many other large undertaking, in many ways more than most programmers believe. But in many ways, it's different in more ways than most professional managers expect. So uh, the way I interpret that and the way I have observed in practice is that most software people don't think uh, there's anything in traditional project management that applies to them. And uh, on the other side, uh, most professional managers uh, are surprised when they find out that you can't manage software projects like you would manage projects to build a building or or uh, a new highway or whatever the physical uh, attributes might be of their projects. So my work has been to try to bridge this, gra this gap between what uh, software people believe and what managers expect. Slide 17, uh, so we're primarily addressing experienced project managers who need to understand more about managing software projects. And we also want to show software people that uh, there are techniques in the PMBOK guide that can be adapted and extended for software projects. So I'll tell you a little about the PMBOK guide, starting on slide 18. The fifth edition of the PMBOK guide was published uh, also this year. And uh, you're probably quite familiar with requirements changing in the middle of a project. We were well into our work when the fifth edition was published, and that caused us some rework to be compatible with the newest edition of the PMBOK guide. So the PMBOK guide has five process groups, 10 knowledge areas, and within those knowledge areas, there are 47 different processes that are described. The next slide uh, mentions that there were two major changes from the fourth edition. One was inclusion of a life cycle continuum statement, and I'm going to spend a bit of time talking about that, and the other was a new knowledge area was added. So uh, it is project stakeholder management. That's a new chapter at the end of the PMBOK guide. So the nine knowledge areas in version four became 10 knowledge areas in version five. Uh, on slide 20, I mentioned that, in fact, I quote the statement out of the PMBOK guide. Project life cycles can be described as falling somewhere in a continuum from predictive or plan-driven approaches at one end to adaptive or change-driven approaches at the other. So I'm going to come back and talk a bit about that continuum in a little bit. Here are the 10 knowledge areas in the PMBOK guide, and I've highlighted the knowledge areas. The first three chapters are basically the introductory material that allows you to understand the knowledge areas in chapters 4 through 13. Uh, so the structure on, on slide 22, the structure of our software extension uh, mirrors the structure. So the PMBOK guide uh, decomposes down to three levels. And the third level describes input, tools, techniques, and outputs for each of those 47 processes. We added some additional subsections, and our content is based on that continuum of life cycle models, uh, plus some extensions and ad adaptations within the 10 knowledge areas of the PMBOK guide. So I'm on slide 23 now. 